Hello, dear colleagues. Nice to see you here today. And I remind you that now we are going to start our regular webinar, one in the series of webinars devoted to the channels in traditional Chinese medicine. And today it will be a webinar about bladder channel. This webinar, as well as the previous ones, is based on the offerings of the Vedapal's team specialist, practitioner and reflexologist Sergei Kasintsev. And everything will be presented today, including PowerPoint presentations, data and schemes. It was all provided by him. And my name is Anastasia, and I'm really happy to be here to voice his ideas and to share his thoughts with you. Also, I'd like to remind you that you can watch our webinars not only online, but also uh, they are available for you on our website, vedapulse.com. To watch purchased webinars, you just need to go to vedapulse.com, log in uh, into a personal account, and then uh, choose a link to the previous webinars, recordings of webinars. And it will be just available for you any time and as many times as you need. So that's quite convenient, I suppose. Also, our website provides you with such an, hmm, possibilities as purchasing expert consultation option. So if you'd like, for example, Sergei Kasintsev to talk to you in person and to analyze your survey um, and maybe share some um, a tip some piece of advice, then you can purchase also an expert consultation. Uh, how to do it, you can just see on our website, vedapulse.com. If you have any questions, you can contact me also anytime. But let's start our webinar now and talk in detail about this interesting channel, Bladder Channel. As you remember, we work on the following scheme. We discuss main characteristics of the channel, its projection areas and functional use, as well as mm, the most important points of the bladder channel and some practice methods of passing the channel. Its full name is uh, Tzu Tai Yan Pan Guan Jin. If we divide it into parts, Su means legs, so this channel is connected to our legs. Uh, normally, if you see Zu in the name of a channel, it means that this channel starts or maybe finishes uh, at the area of our legs. At our legs, uh, talking about the bladder channel, it finishes at our legs because it starts near our eyes. Then they come to the six harmony scheme. You can see it on your screen now. The bladder channel belongs to the Tai Yan energetic axis. It means that this channel is connected to the first level of our protection levels. And it means that here we meet the maximum of Yan energy. So these two channels, uh, bladder channel and small intestine channel, uh, they work in pair and they protect us from external pathogenic energies. Sometimes uh, such energies are called Sha energies. So you may have met such naming of pathogenic energies in literature. And this is the first level that protects our body and our um, energy from negative influences. If you are interested in this scheme about six harmonies and about six levels of protection, then you can also share your mm, feedback and we'll think it over, maybe I'll organize next webinars mm, connected to these topics. Uh, coming back to Taiyan level. Taiyan, so it can be translated as a guardian 
uh, it can be understood as a guardian because its energy level mm, which first meets pathogenic energies and it is connected to bladder it is connected to water so together with small intestine uh, they are responsible for our immunity and for protective resources of our body if you remember usin scheme then uh, bladder is connected to water and it's yan meridian which works in pair with kidney channel so together they represent water materia and they manage our body fluids and they manage everything that's connected to water in Ayurvedic terms it will be connected to water category what are main characteristics of water uh, water all this means some dynamic it is moving it is dynamic it is moving very fast and uh, it's very typical for water walking fast uh, so the same we can say about the bladder channel main characteristics of a bladder channel first of all we should say that it manages transforms stores and secretes body fluids it's a very important function of the channel mm. all moisture coming into our body is connected to this channel and this channel is in charge for all fluids uh, in our body you know there are such a um, point of view uh, and such statistic as a baby comes to the world and consists uh, on 90 percent of water and at the moment of, of death a person have a person has only 60 percent of water comparing to the 19 percent uh, which he used to have at birth so it's one of the main parameters as in European medicine uh, so in uh, Eastern practices and uh, ancient traditions water is very important but at the same time European medicine is not so sure about the significance of mm, our ordinary bladder as an organ because uh, in European medicine it's just only like physiological organ uh, which is connected to uh, uh, to saving urine and uh, it's not uh, so important mm, but uh, if we are talking about energy uh, we cannot agree here and at energetical level the bladder channel is very important it is the longest channel it includes 67 biological active points and it influences not only fluids of the body though it's very essential but it also influences our spine and uh, it influences our bones that's why it's so important here uh, and uh, it's interesting that uh, there is a, a unique feature of the channel it provides strong energetic effect and uh, one of the most powerful biological active points connected to energetic uh, effect uh, belongs exactly to the, this channel it will be biological active point number 60 and sometimes it's also called Kunlun point you can see on your screen it maintains even blood flow and um, it's connected to all organs and channels in our body you can see it opens into ear 
and it is connected to water energies. Uh, it's important for our hearing, it's responsible for it. Uh, as I said, it works in pair with kidney channel, and um, that's why mm, when you need to influence hearing possibility uh, and uh, other disorders connected to the auricular therapy as a treatment method, then no surprise that uh, you would influence biological active points of these two channels, kidney and bladder. Uh, firstly, for example, you work with the bladder and then uh, you add to your prescription biological active points of the kidney channel because kidney connected to our genetics and uh, in this case it will be uh, like uh, UN points in this system. Mirror of this channel, it is hair on the head and uh, sound bones, strong bones. That's why if uh, you've got a patient losing hair or a patient uh, with osteoporosis, then something is wrong with the energy in our system, which we discuss today. Salt taste. Where can we find this salt taste? The first thing that comes into our head is mineral water. Yes, mineral water is good here. Also, there is a famous food rich in microelements and providing us with salt taste is seafood. Mm, by the way, both will be useful here as uh, sea vets. So fish or other seafood. It will be right salt taste, useful nutrition. Talking about emotions, you can see it's fear or absence of fear, fearlessness. So it's obvious, then there is not enough energy in the system or if it flows uh, with some problems, if there are blocks for energy, then a person uh, will suffer from fear. If everything is okay with the energy, then there should be no fear. And uh, one more point about salt taste that we should mention. Uh, you don't need just to eat salt, mm, trying to initiate the system, because it's not the amount of salt which is important. Mm, the salt and salt taste itself, we need it just to initiate the system. So, uh, European standard of using uh, salt per day is uh, 3 to 5 gram of salt daily. Mm, and how to measure it? There is one very simple advice. Just uh, don't, don't use salting. <laughs> don't salt your food. We don't need a lot of salt, we need just the feeling of it. And in China, they say uh, that medications for kidney is better to use together with salt water. So you take this medication that you need to use and then you take uh, half of glass of water and 
After that, you just add salt. Mm, how much? Not much, just one crystal of salt. And it will be enough for us to get this salt test and to initiate uh, energy flow in the system of Blera. This water will be supposed uh, to be salt water. Why I say so? Why I am talking so much about uh, the amount of salt? Because using too much salt can lead to uh, some unpleasant moments, such as concretions, for example, or hypertension. So the good variant will be to use not salt, just it is, but to use some um, food which can which includes salt. For example, you can use uh, very famous soy sauce. Sure, it should be natural, good soy sauce, but uh, if you're using it, you'll get this taste of salt and also you will be able to increase and uh, to stabilize energy in the channel of a bladder. And another famous recommendation is to use seaweeds and you can use them both as fresh seaweeds if you've got such a chance and also you can use them dried. For example, when cooking a soup, you can add dried seaweeds and it will be good for your salt taste. It will be good for getting it. These questions and questions similar to these, Sergei Kasintsev uh, analyzes in other series of webinars. Uh, it is called Where My Energy Comes and Where to Get the Energy. So these are additional webinars where Sergei Kasintsev and if you are interested in them, just let us know. We'll try to do our best to provide you with this information. Uh, pay attention, mental manifestation of this system is wisdom, will, strength of spirit, love, openness, and fluidity. A very interesting slide you can see. Talking about key features of our system, of the bladder system, we should say that it is a special one due to shoe points located here. They connect the system to all inner organs and their energetic systems. That's why Rika Sinsev recommends you to remember this scheme that you can see on your screen now. Or at least uh, make a screenshot or print it after our webinar um, just to use uh, the picture of it until you remember the scheme. Uh, pay attention. Talking about consequences of meridians, uh, we should mention big circle of energy circulation. And you can see uh, there is uh, on the left side blue arrows and here are some kind of a mess in these blue arrows so it's not very easy to use this consequence. Uh, that's why it's much better to use uh, the second variant. You can see red arrows on the right side of your screen. It's much easier to remember and it shows us that uh, ancient Chinese specialists uh, used to know that um, all our inner organs are innervated with nerves and uh, it shows us uh, levels of shoe points corresponding to the nervous plexus innervating um, 
inner organs, uh, talking saying organs, I mean organs in uh, traditions of Western medicines. Organs is physiological organs in the body. So please use this scheme, quite interesting one. And we are moving next to power points of a bladder channel. Sure, main points are biological active points of five elements. And you remember that they are located on each channel. And their order depends on the category of a particular channel, if it is Yang channel or Yin channel. So today we've got Yang channel and the consequence of points will be just as for other Yang channels, as you can see it on your screen. Shoe point number one. Uh, it is located at uh, tip toys. Our Yang channel provides us the, these main points. So um, you see it starts from shoe point number one, point of metal category. If it would be in channel, then it would start with wood um, category point. And one of the most important points for us is uh, an interspace point or gap point, which provides an algetic effect. And here it is point number 63 for the bladder channel. Also, we should mention low point, because it is exactly the point from which uh, collateral line comes to the paired uh, due to the Indian rule channel. And here it is point number 58. It means that this point gives energy to Yuan point of the paired channel, kidney channel. So you can see it sends energy to the point number three on the kidney channel. And don't forget about more and shoe points. More point, you can see it is point number three. Oh. And shoe point belongs to the bladder channel. More point does not. Shoe is point number 28 on the bladder channel. And you remember that all shoe points lay uh, exactly on the bladder channel, as the previous picture showed. By the way, in prescriptions of the VetaPulse device, uh, there are different algorithms, and one of the algorithms is an algorithm of Schumo therapy. That's why we are talking so much about Shu and Mo points, because they are included in the algorithmic part of, uh, of such extensions as acupuncture extension and others working with biological active points. That's why you need to remember these points, because often um, they are necessary when you are practicing, for example, Zhu therapies or other methods without the pulse or without it. But anyway, sure and more therapy will be useful when working with such biological active points. So we are moving next. And let's find out in details their 
shoe and more points are located uh, in the bladder channel. Talking about shoe point, here it is called Panguan Shu. Panguan is bladder in Chinese and Shu is for Shu. It is the lowest of all shoe points. You'll find it near sacrum. Move a little bit aside from the second sacral foramen. And uh, no matter what constitution your patient has, at any constitution, uh, at any weight of a person, it will be easy for you to palpate this area and to find here these foramens. So after you found it, just move a little bit aside, uh, like a half of tsun aside, and here it is point number 28, shoe point of a bladder channel. More point is located on the anterior surface of our body at the midline. Four soon lower than the navel. It is a, a common description. Four soon lower than the navel. And you can meet it uh, very often in literature. But Sergei Kasinsov supposes that it is much closer to the pubis. So he recommends to search for this point um, at a distance of one tsun over the pubis. Talking about shoe points, we mentioned that they start from tiptoes and go in the back direction. And so it is uh, the end of a channel. And last point of the channel is point number 67. It is point of a metal element. And here uh, we would like to ask you a question. Uh, if you remember, talking about Usin system, what will be the function of metal point on the bladder channel? It can be quite useful to brush up uh, this information a little bit and it will show us your knowledge uh, of Usin system. Yes, it is tonic point. You remember, metal is a mother of water, so don't forget about these interconnections. They can be useful. So, and talking about this point number 67, it uh, can be translated into English from Chinese as um, reaching in, like to reach in. And you remember, our meridian is connected to water and um, metal at the same time the most uh, in substance of all. So that will be a very interesting point. The next point, mm, number 66, is called Zutungu and can be translated as, mm, as moving stream, as flowing stream at our leg. And it is point which we call element and the element point. So it will be very water point. Have a look. Point number 67, the last point of the channel, is located at the nail root. You can see on the screen, find the little finger and then 
move along the side surface of your little finger just uh, till you meet the first uh, big joint at the place where your toys finish and just in front of this point where is the point number 66 this uh, flowing stream it is in it is a point which can influence fluids in our body because uh, the water channel and uh, water point gives a double effect here it can be used in hypertension and we are, we are moving next the next point which we need to discuss is point number 65 it is Shugu point and you can find it just uh, after the joint its name in English is connecting bone this point is sedative and belongs to the wood element uh, it is famous for the ability to take the uprising energy flow from your head so it has cooling effect and it can cool the heat and it can calm the wind and in Chinese tradition wind is everything which is moving and the wind can damage first of all uh, the upper part of our body so such uh, cases as headache or even stroke maybe they can be connected uh, to the situation the excess of wind and it is connected and depends on uh, the Taiyan energy axis as well as it depends on the common level of energy in the patients body uh, you remember common level of energy you can measure using our uh, the pulse device and where it will be a uh, total power index uh, among our indices uh, in the indices step the next point to discuss is point number 64 to find it uh, just slide along the bone until you meet uh, the head of bone and at the place of the transition of a bone to its head there is a point Zingu which means main bone and for this channel it will be Yuan point it means it is connected to the initial energy of the channel and talking about its effect need to mention that it coincides uh, with the effect of previous point so this point is also can be used uh, to to get uh, an excess of heat and to mm, get it away from the head talking about women 
then you know that women often suffer from climax uh, with specific symptoms and all these symptoms such as um, rushes or feeling of heat uh, near the head and the, in the face area as well as um, for example reddening of the face all these symptoms uh, can be influenced by working with these two points and this point number 20 oh, sorry number 64 has one more interesting feature it can be used in patients with cold mm. when uh, there is a chill syndrome like if person is chilling is shivering uh, then you can use this point together with the uh, air point number three mm, which is called Taisi and is the third point on the kidney channel. Use these points in combination and it will be good for patients with chilling. Next point to discuss is point number 63. To find it, you need to continue moving along the foot and along the uh, lower border of cuboid bone. Where will be this point? It is also called Zin Main Point, which means Golden Gate, and it's interesting. because it is uh, the most attackable, most vulnerable point of this meridian. Uh, talking about effect, it is sedative point and it can be used as an algetic point. When it's necessary to restore the energy flow in the channel. You can use point number 63. And pay attention to your feelings at the moment. If you are palpating the meridian and you feel some painful effect, painful syndrome, you should also analyze the scale of this pain. So if it's pain mm, very strong or medium and this level of pain is connected uh, to the ability of energy to flow in the channel. If there are any hurdles uh, then you will feel unpleasant feelings. If there is a blockage or energy cannot flow at all, then you will feel a strong pain. Or uh, another variant, you can feel nothing. You can just have no feelings at all in the projection of a meridian. Uh, for example, Sergei Kasintsev had such cases in his practice, then uh, he was working with patient and was using acupuncture, uh, but uh, the person didn't feel anything even when Sergei Kasintsev was working with needles. It means that energy uh, has been blocked for a long time in this meridian and uh, even the energy flow changed the direction and started flowing along additional collateral line. 
So it's uh, very important uh, to avoid such um, chronic um, energy flow in disorders. Point number 63 is good to clean uh, and to restore energy flow. It is connected to the spine and uh, our next point is point number 60. We have already mentioned this point in the beginning of our webinar and they said that Kunlun point is a very powerful point. Why is it called Kun Lun? Uh, normally, uh, there is a mountain in China with the same name. But uh, this point has this name uh, due to some myths. Because uh, in Chinese tradition, there are ancient myths talking about some celestial mountain with the same name uh, which is the home uh, for goats and one of goats is uh, the goddess mother Sivanmu and she is famous for ability uh, to share eternal life and According to this legend, if a person can get this celestial mountain and there are a lot of hurdles on his way, uh, he should go through the fire, through moats, should uh, struggle with uh, monsters, fighting and so on. So if he finally gets safe and sound to this Mm, celestial mountain, then he meets this mother Siwan Mu and she awards the person with uh, pictures of eternal life. So in Chinese tradition, uh, pictures are fruits uh, of eternal life. They bring immo uh, immortal mm, as a immortal immortalness hmm, to the person. For example, comparing to uh, Russian traditions, we've got our legends connected to rejuvenated apples, um, and in China you see its pictures. Maybe in some Saxon tradition uh, there are other fruits. Just let us know. It will be interesting for us. But coming back to this point, point number 60, we should mention that it is connected to the fire element. And you see, here is interesting combination, fire and water. At first glance, it's two contrary systems. But the main task of good uh, energy, of good energetic of person, is to unite these elements. Is to com we need to combine them and to make them live together in our body. And if someone is a success in it, then uh, Ch in China they say that uh, such person who unites fire and water can get um, eternal life. And it is connected to the idea of interconnection of all elements in the universe. And uh, it is one of the most powerful energetic points, especially when working with a pain syndrome in the area of our lumbar 
and uh, in the back area. It is specific point uh, when uh, treating nervous system disorders and in patients with hypertension. Because you see, mm, what is hypertension? Mm, definitely it is connected to fire and water because our nervous system it's like a conductor and it is connected to water but uh, talking about the function here it will be more about the fire because every time when you feel an increasing blood pressure we are talking about the combination of fire and water because our blood as a fluid is connected to the water system and fire in our body is responsible for everything which is going up. You remember that fire is a rising substance. That's why here we can use this point in hypertension and it will be quite useful. The next point is point number 58. It is low point in the system and it's called Fei Yang, which means a fast transaction of Yang. It connects bladder channel uh, to kidney channel. And it also can uh, get the energy from our head, an excess of energy from our head, and it can be used in diseases connected to nose bleeding. If there are nasal bleeding, uh, you can use this point. And also it can be a point of emergency in such a disease as a Quinkis disease. You know, it's acute condition and uh, it is connected also to the upper part of our body, to our head. So this point can be used here because it can uh, redistribute young energy very fast. It's very easy to find this point and it's not compulsory even to know this um, system of soon distances just to, to uh, just to start you need to to look at the external side of the muscle on your leg and uh, you should try to find um, a half of distance at your shin and you will feel there uh, there are like two parts of a muscle and they meet at one point for example to feel the muscle better or you can just pull your toys um, mm -hmm. to yourself. And it will allow you to see the muscle, to feel it. And there will be a fossa. So move a little bit down along the muscle and uh, a little bit aside uh, to the external part of your leg. Just a little bit around one soon and then start pressing. You know, uh, this muscle Mm. 
calf muscle is one of the most powerful one of the most strong muscles in our body because it it is involved in the process of putting our body vertical and in it's really necessary when we are walking so it's very strong muscle and it's often tensed that's why a lot of people have unpleasant feelings than walking the this biological active point the next point is point number 40 and it is located in the center of uh, popliteal fossa Weiju point translated as supporting middle and you will find it uh, around the middle part of popliteal fossa uh, at a half of distance uh, of a fold be careful there is an artery and uh, any sharp influence even too strong pressing can cause a damage of artery and damage of artery means disorder in blood circulation in low limbs mm, sometimes uh, acupuncture texts recommend us to search for this point a little bit upper from the mm, just described mm, position but uh, no matter um, there is also a projection of artery in the place where muscles meet so when working with uh, your fingers you should be careful but if you are working with uh, special devices for example with laser devices then there is no um, hazard for you there is no danger for you to cause an injury here and moreover using laser therapy you should work with this point because it is very good at getting this uh, laser radiance and it sends the effect from the laser uh, along the blood circulation that's why it's a very powerful point here and um, it is connected to the category of celestial points in the traditional Chinese medicine we are moving next talking about a system of elements we should mention uh, that earth element controls the energy level of our meridian and uh, points of our meridian uh, have interesting specific effect uh, this cooling effect for the heat syndrome and an ability to calm the blood in the body in patients with um, joint disorders and diseases it is recommended to combine uh, these biological active points of the bladder system uh, with point number five on the channel of the triple heater and if we are talking about ties according to yin yang system 
then remember that our bladder channel is connected to the kidney channel and as you can see from the scheme on the right side of your screen sometimes we need to work off an excess of energy from the channel of urinary bladder to do it we need to activate biological active point number 58 to bring in the energy from it to your iron point uh, number 3 on the kidney channel and kidney channel also can share energy from its low point number 4 to the point number 64 on the bladder channel in Ayurvedic traditions this channel is Vata channel as well as kidney channel, lungs channel and large intestine channel these four channels belong to Veta category and they are responsible for Veta do for Vata dosha in our body according to the rules of pulse diagnosis you can see that bladder channel is main in the pair with the triple heated channel so it can bring energy from the low point number uh, 58 to the point number 4 along the triple heater channel which will be your end point for a channel and we come to one of the most interesting slides in our presentation it is about the course of a channel and we are going to discuss both the course of a main meridian and the course of the tendus muscular meridian because there are some differences main meridian starts from the inner angle of an eye you can see from the inner angle and then it goes along the head to the back and where it divides into two branches and the numeration of points is the following uh, first of all we go along the first line of the bladder channel and this line uh, is uh, standing one and a half soon from the back posterior middle line this is line in which includes shoe points and this line in the area of sacrum comes closer to the middle line and goes uh, on the lower limb descending to the popliteal fossa uh, where uh, biological active point number 40 by the way then biological active point number 41 the next one after point number 40 will be found again on your back it stands free soon from the back posterior middle line and this line goes along the, the whole back points uh, of this line are supposed to be supporting points for 
shoe points. So if you see shoe point, uh, the next point to, to it, uh, locate, which is located nearby at the same level, uh, will be supporting point for the particular shoe point. Then after that, biological active points and their numeration uh, continues lower uh, than popliteal fossa along the back uh, surface of our leg and then the meridian uh, finishes at the biological active point number 67 at the external surface of our little finger of the foot. So you see such an interesting location of the meridian. And now oh, we are coming to the location of tendus muscular meridian. And it has um, much more of coverage comparing to the main meridian. Uh, you can see on your screen uh, everything that is marked with blue. will be a projection of tendus muscular meridian. It duplicates the course of the main meridian plus it has additional branch um, going down from the inner angle, uh, from the inner corner of our eye to the corner of mandible. It goes over and under the shoulder joint, so it's like rolling, rolling this joint, and it influences uh, the shoulder function a lot. In the area of your blade, it connects to the muscular line, which includes as the first, so the second lines of the bladder channel, which we mentioned. Then, at our legs, all the back surface of the thigh plus uh, back and anterior surface of the shin belongs to tendus muscular meridian of the bladder. So any changes, pain, osteochondrosis or disorder of shoulder function, for example, some problems with rotation of shoulder, uh, all these will be indications to use biological active points of the bladder system. Projection areas are connected to the lower part of abdomen, so zone near navel and zone under the navel, as well as all lumbar zone, including upper part of buttocks, and um, at our sides at sides of our legs. Uh, this projection zone uh, goes down along external surface of thigh. Facial projections are connected uh, to our um, chin and pay attention to the force between uh, lower lip and chin. Uh, this zone reflects uh, not only urogenital but also just urinary functions. 
and the specific point of the bladder meridian is located in the temporal area and uh, for women it will be at the right side and for men it will be on the left. So if you've got some bad feelings uh, or pains in the temporal area, especially if it's connected uh, to the hypertension attacks, then first of all work with biological active points of the bladder channel. And don't forget at the same time to pay attention to the uh, channel of gallbladder. These two systems mm, are mm, first systems to work with in cases of headache in the area of temples and uh, in cases with hypertension, especially connected to altered mm, vessels or other changes in the area of temples. Let's move on to our traditional practical part. As usually, we remind you that for better passing uh, of a channel you need to initiate small celestial circle and to activate back uh, middle and anterior middle meridian. To do it use key points EG3 for back uh, middle meridian and P7 for anterior middle meridian. EG3 is located uh, at the edge of your palm. So start and uh, uh, start clapping along the sacrum, then go to the lower back and to the back, to your neck to the head and uh, till you meet the mouth. Remember that each next clapping, each next clap uh, should move forward at a half of the palm. Anterior middle meridian should be activated um, through a point P7 and you should go from the pubic area along the anterior middle line uh, on your abdomen, at your chest, neck, to the mouth area and in the mouth you should use your tongue to touch, uh, to touch uh, the upper part of the mouth. And doing it uh, you make a cycle and uh, you organize circulation of energy along the anterior and posterior middle meridians because they meet they meet in the area of your mouth and uh, they bring um, effect um, from this zone to the uh, middle meridian which goes inside of our body and uh, descends uh, through all the free uh, heaters uh, to the pubic area uh, where a new loop starts and such a whirling movements they can illustrate how energy uh, rises along external surfaces and of our body and then uh, comes into the body from our, through our mouth. It comes inside and then goes down. Such a complicated scheme of energy flow. And the meridian of bladder itself. So then uh, working with it, you should start clapping from the inner corner of an eye. Here 
please be careful. Just work with your fingers, uh, not the palm, and rise to the inner edge of your eyebrow. Then working in the area of your head, you should use your fingers and you should be quite careful but at the same time you should hear the sound. It's like a very slight, uh, slight uh, accurate uh, beat, slight accurate punch. Then in this case the large collective points will be uh, worked out properly. Then you are working with the head area and goes um, approximately a half, a two and a half uh, from back middle line. You are going along it uh, until the area of your neck and in the near, just near the seventh uh, cervical vertebra, you should start clapping with the whole palm. Mm, and a lot of depends on your stretching here, because your shoulder joint should move, and uh, in a norm person can interlock hands. Mm, just uh, on the back, one hand goes from your shoulder, from the upper position to your back and uh, the second hand uh, should go um, from the down position and if everything is okay with your ability to move shoulder joint, then they should meet. If you cannot do it for some reasons, uh, there is nothing impossible here, so you should just train to be able to do it. It will be useful for you. Somewhere it will be more comfortable to use a palm at your back, somewhere it will be um, inner surface of your hand, up to you. So you are working with both lines along the channel of the bladder. If you'd like to work with the first line and then with the second one, um, then you should go along the meridian uh, until you meet a uh, popliteal fossa of the first line and then you should start the second branch again from the back and uh, go down. So you are moving along the back surface of your shin till the center of your shin and then you move a little bit mm, to the external side and clapping the area of ankle. When working in the area between ankle and hamstring, between ankle and heel tendon, you should use your fingertips and especially pay attention to the point Kun Lun because it can initiate a strong effect, it can activate your endorphins and have a strong harmonizing influence for the yin yang system. And then again use standard clapping, then working with the side surface of your foot and finish in the area of little finger. So in this scheme, you influence all biological active points of the whole bladder channel. Remember, if there are any unpleasant feelings uh, on your way, you should stop there and uh, 
pay special attention, use additional massage here, even if these zones are non-standard. Month of bladder channels activity is August. Uh, and please remember, when we say month of a particular channel's activity, it means that biological active points of this channel are mm, better to influence. They are able to give you a stronger response. But at the same time, there are particular days and particular hours in August when biological active points of blood channel are even more powerful, even more open. And uh, there is one interesting uh, formula to calculate the better time of activity of particular energy system. For example, how, to, how can they calculate the time of activity of a bladder channel system. You can use a simple formula. I'll send you on chat. It looks like 2n plus 1. 2n plus 1. Where n is the number of meridian. For example, bladder meridian is meridian number 7. So, we've got 14 plus 1. And it is equal to 15. It means that the time of activity of this channel starts at 15. So, it's, it starts at uh, 3 p.m. And this channel bladder channel will be active during two European hours, so from 3 p.m. up to 5 p.m. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them, and our experts will be glad to answer them. Thank you for your attention. And hope to see you soon.